What's up guys, Eli here, uh, Sunday night, um, back for a new stuff video. Um, got a small pile of stuff that's been accumulating for a little while. Um, I didn't even plan on doing this because I just haven't been buying a ton of music. Um, I have one more thing that I'm waiting on. It's like coming from Finland, I think, or yeah, overseas somewhere. But uh, anyways, quick, um, quick news channel update, I guess. So it is official. Um, Marty, uh, Marty Worm, as you might know him, is... Uh, looks like is going to be doing my shirts. Uh, he's the guy I had in mind all th this whole time. I just didn't want to announce that because, <laughs> you know, before he agreed to do it. Um, so it looks like the date, um, I'm, I, the date I'm looking at is going to be around April 10th. That's when I'm going to submit the payment, um, as to how long he needs to do it. That's totally up to him. Um, so I'm submitting the payment April 10th. He'll make them when he can. So really stoked about that. Um, like I said, he's the guy I wanted. So this is it's working out perfect. So um, I will be getting 24 shirts made, um, keeping a few for myself. Um, some will go out to pre-orders and I'll have probably a good, I don't know, the rest of them will be for sale. I'm going to try to do, I don't want to do all sizes because I don't want to be stuck with a bunch of like sizes that most people don't wear. So if you are, um, say if you're a bigger dude and you need like a 2X or a 3X or something, I do kind of urge you to pre-order that because I'm not probably going to make anything bigger than a, an XL. I might do like one, I might do like one 2X. I just don't want to be stuck with it for fucking forever if no one buys it. So I wear a medium, so I, know I would never be able to wear that. But uh, I, I think I'm going to do a, a contest giveaway. Um, and if I do, I'll probably just do it exactly the way I did my coffee giveaway. No fucking bullshit, no gimmicks. You don't have to... Um, get anyone else to sub i think that i think uh, gimmick contests are fucking lame i think i'm just gonna give one away to a random person so look forward to that um i try to keep this channel as gimmick and and um and ego free because that's the shit that i fucking hate the most and spanning all three um music formats i guess um i've been kind of enjoying the way i've been keeping you know like music and movies separate so we're, we're gonna do that because uh it's working out so i think i'll just start off with the one vinyl record that i have which is this beast of a fucking album right here from 1972 love devotion surrender by carlos santana and mahavishnu john mclaughlin um i had heard of this before i thought that it was uh i don't know really what i thought it was but this is considered a Santana album. This is considered the fifth Santana album, at least according to uh, most music sites. Um, that said, it's not It's not a Santana album. I think it came out under that name because he was probably the more popular. He was probably the more popular. Uh, he was, yeah, he was getting popular in 1972, no doubt. Um I heard fans, there was a lot of pushback on this. A lot of just, you know, regular rock fans weren't digging this. Um, Santana, Carlos Santana had already been kind of pushing into jazz, um, jazz and fusion territories with his, his fourth album was definitely messing around with jazz rock and stuff like that. People were already not, not really digging that and they weren't really digging this either, but I'm talking like mainstream rock fans. Um, so this album is phenomenal. I haven't had it very long, so obviously... You know, I can't say a whole lot about it, but from what I've read, I mean, first of all, I really do like this, but I've, you know, I've read reviews, you know, by people that have listened to this for years and years. And I mean, people go as far as to say there is just literally otherworldly shit going on on this record. Um, as far as the players, other than uh, Carlos and John, you got pretty much, I mean, this is pretty much a, a Santana meets Mahavishnu Orchestra album. You have dudes from both bands on this. And it is just, this is a truly a phenomenal album. Um, so anyways, Carlos Santana on guitar, Mahavishnu John McLaughlin on guitar and piano, uh, Khaled Yusin um, on organ, uh, Armando Peraza, Congos, yeah, the, the master Phil, Billy Cobham on drums, uh, Don Alias on drums, Jan Hammer on drums, Doug, Ranch, Doug Rausch on bass, and uh, James Mingo Lewis on percussion um anyways yeah like i said i i have not had this very long um online i could have sworn it said it came out in 72 this says 73 so do with that what you will gatefold 
So I used to listen to, I used to like Santana as a teenager, actually. I used to have some of his albums. I don't know if I can really get into that kind of stuff anymore, but um, yeah, this is a really fucking cool album. I've really started, kind of just started to get into Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, some people say John McLaughlin is the best guitarist of all time. That is actually not a super uncommon opinion. Um, anyways, I, I've, yeah, Mahavishnu came onto my radar via the, the guys in Yes!, because uh, I'm a big Yes fan, you might have known that. So Yes toured with Mahavishnu in the early 70s, and the Yes guys were massive fans. So I've always wanted to get into uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, I also bought this Mahavishnu Orchestra CD. This is their first album, uh, The Inner Mounting Flame, Mahavishnu Orchestra, with John McLaughlin. I don't know why it says that. I, it's a lot of the Mahavishnu albums will say that like with John McLaughlin, but it was his band, so I'm not really sure. Anyways, that doesn't matter. Um, this came out originally in uh, 1971. Like I said, it's their debut album. This is the '98 repress. Um, so yeah, Mahavishnu Orchestra are one of the bigger names in like jazz rock, jazz fusion, whatever you want to call it. I'm really happy to have some of their music to finally listen to. Um, yeah, stoked to listen to all that. We also got the 2018 album from Amorphous Queen of Time. This is their 13th full-length studio album. There is one in there that I didn't include because it was like rework song. So if you want to include that, this could be their 14th album. Um, Nuclear Blast Records. I have heard this. I've listened to it online before. Um, I've been into Amorphous for a long, long time. I just, I don't know, I, I, this, I, it didn't really grab me when it came out, but, you know, I never gave it the proper amount of time that it needed. I just, I, I heard so many good things about this album when it came out, and I'm still hearing people say really good things about this album four years later, so I bought it for, you know, I bought it real cheap, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to finally, you know, give it the amount of time that it needs to, to actually, you know, digest such an album. Um, I've been into Amorphous for a long, long time. You know, while I do prefer their earlier death metal stuff, I do like their later sound. Because uh, to be honest, you know, the first Amorphous album I heard was like an early 2000s album. So it was, they were already well out of their, you know, pure death metal phase. Um, and, you know, they have a new album out this year. Um, I'm interested in hearing that. I just, for some reason, I figured before I grabbed that, I think I'd, you know, I'd rather listen to Queen of Time first. I also picked up this album, which I wish I hadn't. So you probably get, when I show this, you're going to be like, dude, why? Why did you buy that? Why would you need that? And you're, you're definitely right to say that. Um, this is a weird thing for me to buy. I bought the 1997 second full-length album from Six Feet Under, Warpath, because I saw it randomly in the store. I'd never heard it before. I'm a big fan of their debut, Haunted. I really like Haunted. I was kind of thinking this would sound like Haunted Part 2, and it, it this sounds like maybe 40% haunted and the rest just garbage. So um, <laughs> I listened to it once already last night. I don't need to ever hear this again. Um, so at least, I mean, look at this atrocious layout. Jesus Christ, dude. Um, Metal Blade Records. Uh, haunted was just a great kind of, a great semi-groovy, simplistic, you know, um, primal sounding death metal album. I really dig it. You know, it's, it's got... Chris Barnes on vocals, fresh out of Cannibal Corpse. Actually, he might not have even been out of Cannibal Corpse just yet. Uh, but anyways, and then it's got dudes from Obituary. I'm a big Obituary fan. I like I like Haunted, but yeah, this album, man, just really let me down. Uh, I also got, um, I, I guess I was feeling kind of nostalgic because um, I also bought this album that I had years ago. This is from 2003, their third full-length album talking about aborted with gormageddon the saw and the carnage carnage done um this band for me really just their first like three albums are really cool they're just like gore grind brutal death metal stuff um after this they just started to kind of go down the metalcore path and just started to really turn me away and i never i've heard that they're like last i don't know three four five albums have been you know good death metal they got a, a pretty big fan base um 
I just, I don't know. I, I've checked some of it out here and there. It just sounds like really modern d death metal to me. I don't know. I don't think it's for me. I just, I picked this up randomly. Used for pretty cheap. Um, I thought I'd give it a, uh, you know, I haven't listened to this in a long time. Just wanted to see if maybe I'd still like it. Uh, but yeah, this came out on Century Media and Olympic Recordings. I, oh, originally came out on Listenable. Yeah, Listenable put it out originally, out of France. Um, yeah, we'll see. Also, I have two uh, new release albums. Um, we'll start with uh, this album from... This came out on March 4th. I have yet to listen to it. I've had it for probably a week now. We have the new album from Midnight. This is their, I think, their fifth full-length album, right? Um, Let There Be Witchery. Uh, Metal Blade Records. I love Midnight. You might see, might be surprised to hear that this is the first album I've actually owned from them, which is really weird. I've, I've just for I, I and I've literally been um, I've been aware of Midnight since before their debut album, since since he was just putting out like EPs and splits and stuff. So why it took me this long, I really don't know. I'm I'm honestly a pretty big Midnight fan. Um, <laughs> Anyways, haven't listened to it yet. Really, really stoked to hear it. it's no doubt going to be a, probably a top 10 contender for me. But we'll see, right? I can't really say that for now. Um, so this next album, this is the other new release that I have. This is one of my most anticipated albums of this year. I will say I've listened to it one time already. And so far, based off one listen, I'm not into it. But that's not uncommon for this band. We are talking about the new album from Ghost with uh, Impera, right? Impera, amazing cover art. Um, this, this is the same artist that has done their last like three or four releases, something like that. He's fantastic. As awesome as this cover art is, I don't think it's quite as good as their last uh, album cover. But it's, I mean, this is right, oh, just right on par with it. But um, Anyways, this came out on March 11th, uh, Friday, I think. So I've already listened to it once. I will say, so the, the first Ghost album was the only one that really got me on the first listen. Everything else has been a grower. Their second album grew on me a little bit quicker, but I was still disappointed up, upon its release. Um, their third album... I think their third album even was a grower for me, but I, I, I now think it's some of their best work. Their last album, Prequel, uh, that took some time. The, the, the lead single from that album, Rats, I fucking loved from the start. Everyone seemed to love that song. But the rest of the album, I was like, ah, man, I like Rats. I don't like any of the rest. I will say now, there are some really, song, really strong songs on Prequel, but it does have some filler. That is my least favorite Ghost album, but I, I still like it. Um, and yeah, it took a good couple of months to grow on me, and I think this this is what I anticipate. I anticipate this to be my least favorite Ghost album to date, but I still think that there are going to be some songs on here that grow on me. I think it'll grow on me as an album. I'm just I'm just trying to be honest. What's funny is so the the, the lead uh, single off this album, Hunter's Moon. You know that's 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 uh, that single came out months ago. I remember hearing that and like, man, I really don't dig this. I will say, after listening to this whole album, I think that's one of the stronger songs, which is not a good sign. Um, I also will say, though, that, um, let's see, there's a song on here, I do, uh, Call Me a Little Sunshine, uh, is actually a pretty cool song, and there's a music video for it. Ghost music videos are always super killer. I don't think it's as good as some of their other videos, but yeah, um, really, really, really looking forward to seeing uh, what other videos they do for the album, so... Anyways, I don't know. Have you guys heard it? What do you think about Impera? I'm, I'm a big Ghost fan. I have been since literally their debut album. And uh, I'm, not a, I'm not ashamed to say it. I also picked up the album on cassette. Because why not? Um, it was cheap. Came on this kind of baby blue shell. Pretty nice looking tape. Um, as you guys probably know, I've, I've, yeah, I've gotten really back into really, really hardcore back into tapes over these last couple years. I'm really enjoying 
Because, I mean, I grew up on tapes, and that, the tape format has a big, big place in my heart. So it's been cool. Um, by the way, in the CD version, there's some really, really killer artwork. It's got a thick booklet full of amazing artwork done by this, this same artist. So definitely check that out. Um, I got a couple other tapes, too, by the way. Some really fucking cool ones, too, including the 2005 compilation from The Spawn of Satan. This compiles uh, The Spawn of Satan's um, uh, split material that they did with Nunslaughter and Bloodsick back in 2002 and 2003. Um, from what I've seen online, the artwork is, is red. Red, and mine's just black and white for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. This came out on a really underground label called Harsh Brutal Cold Productions, uh, limited to 300 copies. I have one of the last few. Jim Satanic, R.I.P. Jim Kanya from Nunslaughter and Spawn of Satan and countless other pro uh, projects. Um, so yeah, Jim Kanya was in this band, obviously, and then a couple other, a couple other dudes from the Ohio, you know, death metal scene. Uh, including uh, Reaper, uh, Reaper from uh, Hellcast. He he did some bass on on. Uh, I, I don't know if he plays on any of these tracks, but he he did play some bass uh, in this band at one point. So um, yeah, this is just really 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 cool to have. Uh, R.I.P. Jim Kanye again, and then last but not least, I have these two. 1998 demos from the solo black metal project called Hugin. We'll just go one at a time. The first one is called Tales from the Ancient Times. Like I said, they both came out in 98. It was just one guy in Italy. He, at one point, he added uh, some session guys. I think just, I think he just added one session guy just to play some various instruments, but he wrote everything. Um, this is a really, really nice J card. This came out on this label that I'm not even familiar with, Ars Antiqua, uh, out of Italy. This is a really nice kind of matte finish, thick J card. So yeah, one man black metal out of Italy, in case I didn't say that nine times already. Um, I've only really listened to both of these demos like once a piece. I really fucking dig them. It just sounds like, it sounds like campfire black metal. Um, I know that's not like a genre or a descript description or anything. This came out on a Latvian label called Beverina. Yes. So this one is called In the Lands of In the Land of the Old Hills. And the first one is Tales from the Ancient Times. So yeah, I say campfire black metal because it's it's just like really laid back, subdued sounding black metal. Um, 90s sounding black metal and you hear like in the background you hear like the sound of like a, a crackling fire it literally just to me and it's a really cool atmosphere it, it, to me it sounds like a black metal band uh, and maybe it was recorded that way but it sounds like a black metal band like playing around a campfire it's really fucking cool it's not like raging scathing you know black metal attack it's more it's more atmospheric and laid back and kind of chill black metal really cool I've never heard anything quite like it it does sound kind of Bathory inspired um, just imagine like Corthon playing around a campfire, maybe. And it's, it's cool stuff, man. I've never heard anyone talk about them. Um, you can find this one on Discogs for pretty cheap, even despite the fact that it's not, uh, it's not super common, but it's just, it, it's just not valuable. The other one, this one, um, this one's hard to find. This one you don't see, but, uh. Yeah, maybe maybe grab this uh, in the land of the old hills. You, God, you, you might have to get it shipped from a European country, but I guarantee you can get it shipped to you cheap, and I think it's worth it. So, um, yeah, definitely check out uh, definitely check out those Hugin albums, and uh, feel free to let me know what you think about this other stuff. Uh, but most importantly, talk to me about your dogs and cats because that's what I really care about. So, anyways, I gotta take off. Louis says hello. He's out chewing on a bone, uh, but we will talk soon, guys. Cheers.